Hey guys, in my last video we made unicorn treats, but it's definitely not a party without this magnificent unicorn cake. And what makes it even more amazing is it has three magical levels, stacked high with gold sparkly sugar and a colorful drip design that the princess in your life will love. So let's bring this creation to life and be sure to keep on watching! For the cake layers, I dyed my vanilla cake recipe with shell food coloring so it looks like a unicorn on the inside and outside and I also prepared a batch of Italian meringue buttercream as my frosting. It leaves a satin like finish on your cake and is less sweet than traditional American buttercream. All the recipes I used will be provided in the description box below. So let's begin assembling our first tier of the cake. I'm spreading a small amount of buttercream onto my cake board and placing a 7 inch cake layer directly over that. I like to be generous when I layer my frosting, that way when you cut into the cake it looks extra beautiful and delicious. Once the frosting is spread evenly and slightly peeking out of the edges, I'm stacking the next one on there while repeating those previous steps. And after adding the third 7 inch cake layer, it is time to apply the crumb coat, which is a thin layer of frosting that seals in all the crumbs, exactly what the name sounds like, and it doesn't need to be perfect. Just as long as you cover the entire cake, it gets the job done. To finish off the crumb coat, wipe off the extra frosting to smooth it out as you make a sweep with your turntable and bring in the edges with your offset spatula. Now, while we let the crumb coat chill in the fridge for 15 minutes, I'm doing the same stack and crumb coat process with the 5 inch cakes. This tier is going to be our unicorn head, so you only need 2 cake layers for this since the 5 inch cakes are higher and we don't want them to have a bobble head. You are all set to begin the final layer of frosting after chilling the crumb coat. The key is to get the frosting to stick and my favorite way to do this is piping rings around the top and sides using a decorating tip 789. All you want to do is continue pressing against the cake as you spin the turntable and wipe the excess frosting off of your offset spatula. Then go back and patch up any holes or air bubbles with extra frosting. When the sides are smooth to your liking, you can go ahead and smooth the top as well. Then sharpen the edges by bringing in the sides with a smaller spatula. I make my sweeps in the direction towards me. The third tier is different, but that's what makes it special. For this tier only, I'm using an American buttercream and dyeing it gold with brown and yellow gel coloring to match this amazing gold sanding sugar. And the reason I'm using American buttercream to frost these 9 inch cakes is because we are sticking the sanding sugar onto it. And since it is a crusting buttercream, it will adhere best to it. But there is no need to apply a crumb coat. You can frost the cake with one thick layer of buttercream and press the sanding sugar onto the top and up the sides of the cake, working your way around until completely covered. I scoop a large amount into my hands and swipe the sanding sugar up the sides just like magic. As you can see, the sanding sugar goes all over, so just make sure you have something on your surface to catch it. I'm so excited to dress up the second tier with the colorful drips and the recipe is super easy. All you need is one cup of white chocolate chips and a third of a cup of heavy cream to make the chocolate ganache. Then pop it in the microwave for 30 second intervals until completely melted. Usually two rounds does the trick. Stirring continuously in between rounds and I prefer to add a liquid whitener in before the gel coloring to make the color is more opaque and vibrant. Once the whitener is thoroughly mixed in, the fun part is all the colors. For a bright look, I use neon gel colors and a little goes a long way in the ganache, so all you need is a few drops. To all 
alternate the colorful pattern, I'm dividing the cake into eight equal sections. It has been completely chilled, so it is fairly easy to make the markings with a knife. But before we get to doing our drips, I'm inserting these rods towards the center to give the cake support for when we tear it. They are trimmable to any size, or you can use bubble tea straws, but I highly recommend these, and we'll be sure to link them down below as well. My number one trick to creating awesome drips is to put the ganache into a squeeze bottle and practice on the side of a bowl to get comfortable with the pressure and consistency. And once you are ready, position your bottle along the edge and hold the squeeze for a few seconds, then drag the chocolate by moving over without lifting off of the cake. The mistake I learned the hard way filming this for you guys is to tear the cake first and do your drips after, that way they don't get ruined. I love the look of alternating the different lanes just by holding the squeeze for a few more seconds to make a longer drip and a quick little squeeze for a shorter drip. It is also very important to work with a chilled cake to control the rate of the drips. To complete the design on the top, I'm lightly outlining and filling in the section of the pie with its matching color, similar to how you flood a cookie. Just try your best not to overfill the outline or the extra chocolate will make its way down the cake. To bring the look to the next level, we are painting over the white chocolate drips. To do that, I let this dry overnight first, and I'm mixing up a stunning edible paint by combining a gold luster dust with a few teaspoons of Everclear. I add in a little at a time to ensure the paint isn't too loose, and you have the perfect edible gold paint. Take your time with this and paint with feather light strokes Although we let this dry overnight, the ganache is still tacky and pressing too hard can make marks on the surface. My other tips and tricks are to paint with a tiny brush and dab over any spots that may be more difficult to paint. If you saw my gold graduation drip cake video, the gold was more of a bronze tone. This one is a lighter gold. It's all about which shade of luster dust you choose. After a while, the Everclear evaporates and the paint gets clumpy. So before I started painting the top, I went back and mixed some more in until it is painting consistency to finish off the remaining section. To put everything together, I'm taking the support rods from before and placing four of them into the cake we covered with sanding sugar to set up the bottom tier. Except this time, I attached the caps that came with the kit for a more stable construction. Spread a layer of buttercream to hold the tiers in place for when we stack them and gently slide the drip tier on. It is completely optional, but I love lining the bottom with a rhinestone trim ribbon. It looks super cute, and like the unicorn has a rhinestone necklace. Next, I'm stacking the 5 inch layer for the unicorn head, and there is her necklace. We can't forget about the unicorn horn and ears. I'm going to show you how to shave a 3D horn out of fondant and how to design the perfect ears with a mold. I rolled this gold shimmer fondant from Satin Nice Brand into two balls that are about the size of one inch and I'm shaping each one into a log. On one of the ends, I rolled it slightly thinner to taper it so it looks like a horn. And once I roll out the other one, I'm brushing a very light amount of water on both of them. You can twist, twist, twist them together and carefully insert your lollipop stick. No worries if it comes undone, you can always tighten that twist again. The fondant is going to be sticky. I let it dry overnight before painting, so it is a good idea to get the horn, ears, and drips done the night before. That way, they are all ready. The mold for the ears is so easy to use. I dab cornstarch over the impression to prevent any sticking, and take the satinized fondant and pearl shimmer to cover over the impression. I roll it out to size and leave it thick enough for a skewer to be able to go through. After you pop the ear out of the mold, trim off the scraps with a knife and smooth over the sharp edges with your finger.
to avoid breaking the fondant, twist the skewer through a little at a time. Last, I'm pressing the small impression over that to make the imprint for the inner part of the ear. After drying the horn and ears overnight, I mixed up the same gold paint with the luster dust and Everclear to match the drips. It adds a magical touch to the horn and ears. Gold just makes everything better. Last but not least, it's decorating time. For the unicorn's mane, I'm piping pink and purple rosettes with a 1M decorating tip. A stiff consistency icing is most stable so the rosettes don't fall off of the cake. Don't forget about the one facing towards the front of the face and cascading down along to one side. We can finally add the horn and ears towards the middle, and for the pretty fluttery lashes, I pressed them into the center of the face with an embossing stamp and outlined over them in black icing with a tip number 5. To finish off the playful flower design, I'm alternating between a tip 2A and a tip 4B. The 2A looks like a Hershey's Kiss and the 4B is similar to a star. I left a little bit of room in between all of my rosettes especially for these. So let's fill them in with the pink, purple and blue stiff icing. This is by far my favorite part and it looks so detailed but any beginner decorator can achieve a beautiful unicorn because it is so simple. I hope you guys enjoyed this fun tutorial and you learned something new. Be sure to like this video if you did. It's Christina here. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.